pick the flowers? Huh? Can I pick the flowers? 不行，那个 flower beautiful， 你等下 pick it， OK？ 不要，你掉下去了。马里奥，快牵手走，牵手走。今天爱阿妈。On the moving belt and proceed through the metal detector when directed by the security team. Don't forget to collect your items once you pass through the metal detector and enjoy your visit. Hi. 赛车，马里奥在那边，很大。对。哇，还很大，你看到没？在那边。
Oh, what is that shadow box? What is shadow? Just where the shadow boxes? Upstairs, you're gonna go right in front of me. It's gonna be next to the Simpsons ride, the super floor. Okay, up there.
下单，起来。排队，你要跟他拍照吗？不是这里 ，here here here， 另外一边过来，过来。好了，不要吃了，等一下要拍照了。Searching for the All Spark, and we must find it before Megatron and his Decepticons. Fate rarely calls upon us at a moment of our choosing, but are you ready to join the Autobot Army? Yeah! You sound ready, but before we begin, I'm gonna need some backup. Lieutenant Bumblebee, report in. Here it comes. Universal, make some noise for Lieutenant Bumblebee. It's good to see you, B. Don't forget this side. These humans sound ready. And so are we. Nasteem, send in the first recruits. Hey! A pleasure to meet you both. And don't worry, we'll keep a close eye on your supplies for you. We'll make sure no Decepticons steal them away. Farewell, my friends, and safe travels.
今天呢我不知道走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走走
的没事。Facilities. We're currently undergoing a great deal more expansion, which you can see a little bit of on our left-hand side as we make our way into the front lot. In our front lot, we have our administrative offices, production support facilities like sound and editing suites, and the majority of our 36 sound stages, the largest and oldest of which is coming up on our left, currently getting a paint job. Soundstage 12. A lot of history on Soundstage 12. Here's some highlights of some of the many famous films we've made there over the years. And there on your screens is a peek inside of what our sound stages look like before we've added any scenery or before the cameras begin to roll. They're big padded empty warehouses. That padding you saw, it was it's for soundproofing. The sound stages are almost 100% soundproof, 98. Speaking of which, if we pass an active sound stage with a flashing red light, I'll have to turn off my microphone pretty quickly. I'll put up a graphic saying that I have to be quiet, but you don't have to be quiet and keep your cameras out because you never know who you're going to come and who you're going to see coming and going from these sound stages. If you look off to your left hand side, you can see our empty elephant doors to sound stages eight and seven as they're unloading the sound stage there. You can take a peek inside. As I said, we have a full slate of filming happening on our sound stages and back lot today. Busy production schedule. A couple of shows for NBC, Lopez vs. Lopez and Quantum Leap. Also a uh, pilot, a couple of commercials filming. And one show for our streaming platform, Peacock, Bel Air. Bel Air is a dramatic retelling of The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the old 90s sitcom. These production vehicles that you see here to our left there for Bel Air, along with Soundstage 14 across the parking lot here. Bel Air stars Jabari Banks and Ali Shilaton. Those two very talented actors would like to tell you about their experience of what it's like to film here on our back lot. Take it away, guys. Can you just grab me a water when you get some water? You put egg on, on the cheese. You put cheese on the eggs, on, on the cheese. cheese. It's raw. Oh, I'm going to see something here. No, it's got to be a lie. We could probably fit the whole Bel Air cast and crew in there. You know, we gotta get one of these for the mansion. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. You're lucky for y'all, the Banks family mansion lives right here on the Universal lot. Right. Some of Bel Air's most pivotal scenes have been filmed right here. Jabari, what have been your most memorable moments? I don't know, I mean, there's so many to choose from. You know, I love the four-year set when Will first enters, and at that moment, his life changes forever. What about you? Well, ooh, the Bel Air Academy gym set is here, too, and I remember you having to sit in that cold ice bath for hours. Yeah, 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 and that was really fun. <laughs> no, I still can't feel my toes. <laughs> no, but seriously, my favorite part of this lot is the talented crew who put it all together. Hair, wardrobe, makeup, set design, props, and transportation. Transpo, yes! You know, Transpo is the best. And they have the sweetest rash for us to play with. Actually, speaking of, if we're gonna get a ride like this, we better go talk to Transport now and let these people get back to their tour. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. As long as I get to drive. Oh, not if I've got the keys. Oh, not fun. Come on, man. That's the hit drama Bel Air on our streaming platform, Peacock. NBC has a very long history of producing hit television shows spanning back more than 80 years, beginning with our very first transmission from the opening ceremonies of the World's Fair way back in 1939, when there were only 200 televisions in existence. Since then, we've been responsible for airing and producing some of the most popular and longest-running television shows, many of which filmed right here on the back lot in Universal. Coming up on our left-hand side, it's our very first celebrity signing. It's Ted <laughs> toasting us because of his hit event series airing on Peacock right now. And here to tell us all about it is the executive producer, Seth MacFarlane. These are our production bungalows. 
Now, once upon a time, these buildings were used as dressing rooms for our contract players during Hollywood's golden age. Stars like Doris Day and Rock Hudson would use these buildings as their home away from home while they were filming projects like Pillow Talk on the back lot. Nowadays, they're, they're production offices to Hollywood's best and brightest. Right now, we're passing Mark Platt Productions, the company that's bringing us to the big screen this Thanksgiving. And a little bit of history on our uh, to our left right now, Bungalow 5195, that familiar silhouette there belongs to Albert Hitchcock. Those are his former offices, the genius responsible for Psycho, the birds, and Vertigo. Also coming up on our left-hand side, soundstage 25 and 26, home base for Lopez versus Lopez, the hit sitcom starring George Lopez and his real-life daughter, Maya Lopez, on NBC. And to our right, this two-story building, that's our casting facility. So if there's any aspiring actors on board, now you know where you have to report for that big audition. Wishing you luck, break a leg in the future. We can so we can all say we knew you when. We're about to say goodbye now to the front lot where we have facilities like sound stages for interior filming. And we're heading into the back lot where we have large scale exteriors for outdoor filming, beginning on our left hand side with our metropolitan sets. Metropolitan for cityscapes. These large-scale exteriors have been used for nearly every city you can name. Two kinds of sets here on the back lot of Universal. Facades and practical sets. We have here in the metro sets mostly facades. Facade is a French word meaning front. We build only what the camera can see and they're used exclusively for exterior filming. Other sets are practical, meaning we can use them for both interior and exterior filming. I'm going to show you an example of both on today's tour. On your screens right now, some examples of some of the thousands of projects we've filmed here on the Metro sets over our many years, decades really, including uh, Emmy Award winning television shows and Oscar winning films. Nice place, sir. We're making a turn now so we can explore some of these sets up close and personal, but you can't always believe your eyes. What appears to be brick and mortar, steel and concrete is really just plywood, plaster Paris, stucco, plastic and foam rubber. Everything, as you can see, is deliberately meant to be temporary. For example, this great example here on this wall, here to our right-hand side, on one side it's plywood, and this, the facing of it is uh, brick. To the camera, of course, it looks like a real thing. Also up the block here, you can see New York Street, named for its similarity in appearance to downtown neighborhoods in Manhattan. My co-host, Jimmy Fallon, he has a long history with New York City. Hey, everyone, welcome to New York. I got my start right here in New York on Saturday Night Live. This is actually my old neighborhood. I once got mugged over there by an old woman, tough lady. This is my favorite hot dog guy. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Hey, it's cool, guys. I was just, you know, I was just walking there. So it's not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro sets. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here on the Universal lot. We say goodbye now to the concrete jungle of the Metro sets and prepare ourselves for the equatorial jungle of King Kong and Skull Island. Here's Academy Award-winning director Peter Jackson. It's the original King Kong that might be one. I like films that just take you away from your real life. It's sweet about the adventure. Kong literally does it. I mean, you're on board the ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you are encountering monsters and creatures from you know, prehistoric times. I was thrilled when the universe invited me back to the island. Now we have created this 3D version of the island. Yeah, it's amazing. Thank you. 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 Thank God. Please remain seated at all times. Keep a firm grip on your personal belongings. The night is about to get very rough. So you want to Thanks to CJ's terrific driving, we survived Skull Island. Now hang on to those 3D glasses. We'll need them again later in the tour. I promise to let you know when. King Kong 360 3D was projected on some of the world's largest digital 3D screens. Standing over 40 feet tall and 180 feet wide, utilizing some of the most advanced technology in filmmaking today. The film
film was designed by Peter Jackson and the team at Weta FX. The filmmakers at Weta have won seven Academy Awards. And in a few moments, we're going to share some of our favorites with you coming up on the left-hand side of the tram. Now, picture cars can be used in any number of ways to indicate time, place, era of the story that we're telling. Even what the character wants and desires just by the design of the vehicle. Keep that in mind as you check out some of these beautiful cars. One of my favorites comes up at the very end, the Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle from Paramount Pictures Transformers. It appears to be a tank made of steel and rivets. It's actually plywood and plastic, so it's light enough for us to pick it up and move it for the camera and blow it up and put it back together again. Here's some more examples of how we use picture cars in the movies and on TV. A friend of mine once introduced the next section of our tour. What surrounds you are props, picture cars, and set pieces from the original trilogy of Jurassic Park movies, including the mobile lab, the actual set from the Lost World Jurassic Park to our left. And many of our dinosaurs are on standby. And he's, where are the dinosaurs? They were here for the last tour. They were... Uh, all right, everybody be on the lookout for the Dilophosaurus. Actually, if you see any dinosaurs at all, duck. Definitely duck. He wasn't joking. Steven Spielberg, the director of the original Jurassic Park film, was insistent on using mechanical monsters and physical animatronics for the dinosaurs. He wanted to make sure the actors had something physical to react and act against for the, most, for the best reaction possible. Let's look at how we use that mobile lab from the Lost World Jurassic Park. You know when it starts raining at a Jurassic movie, it means somebody's about to get eaten. But how do we get rain to appear on camera, on cue, ready to roll the picture? We're going to demonstrate that for you right now here in our old Mexico set using sound effects, lighting effects, and the practical effect of water from our overhead water sprinkler system. Here come those sound and lighting effects right now. Nasty storm on the way. Here comes the rain. What is more relaxing than the sound of a nice afternoon rain? Now our sprinkler system, it's a little bit different than the sprinklers you have at home for your lawn. You notice our sprinklers are mounted on these big the nozzles pointed straight up towards the sky so the camera can capture the falling water like naturally occurring rain. But you know what happens when you let the water run too long. Brace yourselves, everybody. Oh! oh Wait, is that fake? It's real! Let's look at how we use this actual set in the movies. You might also recognize these old Mexico sets from movies like Nacho Libre or Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, both of those films distributed by Paramount Pictures. Now we say adios to old Mexico and howdy to the old west. Universal Studios has a very long history of producing western films, starting all the way back in our silent era of the 1920s. These sets have been used much more recently than that for movies like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, directed by Quentin Tarantino, and uh, TV series like Quantum Leap, the hit drama on NBC right now. Here's some more examples of how we use these Western sets through the years with some of our favorite stars. Well, time flies when you're having fun. We're already halfway through the tour. I want to remind everybody to please remain seated. Reach up and pull that red cord if you need assistance. If you lose your cell phone or you have to go to the bathroom, not a problem. Just pull that red cord. I will be back to assist you, but please remain seated at all times. We're going to make a turn now and explore some more of these Western sets, also known as Six Points, because during our silent era of filmmaking way back in the early 20th century, we were able to film six different movies on these sets at the same time. Those early days were also the very beginnings of our studio tour. Our founder, Carl Lemley, remember him? He would charge admission to the general public, two bits, which is 25 cents, and that 25 cents would get you a box lunch and seats on grandstands they erected here in Six Points so folks could watch the films being made, cheering the hero, booing the villain, a lot like watching a live theater performance, totally unlike the quiet on the set that we need for filming today. Well, there's still some sunshine, feeling nice and warm. What do you say we head to the beach? I know the perfect spot on Amity Island, the small New England town, that's been bothered recently by a great white shark, but that's all in the past. They caught the culprit. I see him hanging there on the pier. And oh, there's the police boat in the water. That must mean the divers are sweeping the harbor, making sure it's safe for us to return to the beach. Jupiter's Claim, the actual set from his latest sci-fi epic, Nope. 
Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible notion and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's Planet, a nostalgic, small-time Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky Juke Park. Over there, look into the winking room and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie kid show. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? What? A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso Experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. Well, we've learned a little bit about how to make a movie. Now it's time to be in a movie. Here's the role. You witnessed a terrible crime. An international crime boss, Owen Shaw, is after you. So we need the protection of our family. And Don Toretto and his crew have told us to meet him here at Sullivan's Garage so they can protect us. Here's all the details. Look, this might be more serious than I thought. What just happened? This is a secure line. Who are you? I'll tell you who I am, boy. I'm the reason bad guys use a nightlight. I'm yeah. the reason the boogeyman begs his mama to look under his bed. And I'm the reason you just lost control of this whole operation. My name is Special Agent Luke Hobbs of the U.S. Diplomatic Security Service. And as of 16.9 seconds ago, I'm wrong. the man in charge. Yeah. The hell you are. Let me clue you in on two things, sweet cheeks. One, there's a high-value witness from the Federal Protection Program aboard your vehicle. And two, an international crime syndicate led by Owen Shaw is honing in on this vehicle to take that witness out. Shaw's as ruthless as they come, and he'll stop at nothing to eliminate his target. Every living soul on this vehicle is in serious danger. Other than that, enjoy the ride. This is not your jurisdiction. It is now, stink pickle. Yeah, I'm so tired of you stink guys stepping in. Just whatever you, you feel like. Mute him. Don't you. That's better. <laughs> We're moving your vehicle to a safe location until we have the situation under control. Until then, I want everybody to stay calm. Enjoy the ride. I'm taking care of business. Oh, sorry. Please remain seated at all times. Keep a firm grip on those personal belongings. The ride is about to get very rough one more time. And remember, please no flash photography while we're in the woods. Which is it real? It's a plastic. You got the vampire, man. Guys, guys. Come on, come on. 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 Come
，大家大家，进去进去进去进去进去